A man asks his wife what she would like to do if she were young and hearing this sudden question. She asks him why he is saying these things. So the man explains that when they were young, they were both very poor and that he even made it impossible to take her on a honeymoon. So she asks him to stay calm. After all, she already feels happy just talking to him. And as they walk a little further, she notices that they are close to the place where they planted the wedding apple tree of them. In this, the man comments that it has been 60 years and she reminds him that the tree they planted ended up being broken due to a typhoon. In this, they arrive at the tree in question and notice that it is still standing thanks to the incredible power of nature. I look more at the tree. She sees a golden apple hanging from one of the branches I return home. The man looks in the mirror and suddenly he notices his face rejuvenating and when he runs to his wife, he realizes that she too has returned to her youth. The first thing that comes to his mind is to take her on the much deserved honeymoon that they didn't have. And after that, they welcome his granddaughter Mino, who's soon amazed to see her younger grandparents. And as they sit down to talk, Armino asks that your grandfather doesn't cut his hair because he's already doing really well that way. Sheijie says that his bangs bother him, but he decides to leave his hair like that because she's insisting so much. And in the middle of the conversation, Mino plays with his grandmother asking to marry Shizu. And after this crazy thing, she ends up leaving her grandparents' house. She comments to her father that they are getting younger all of a sudden, and he doesn't understand what his daughter is talking about. Meanwhile, some elderly people comment about Zoso and Inns and notice that they are very missing when he remembers that Inns was going through health problems and then they are sad that they won't be able to see their friends in the park so soon. But as soon as they say this Zoso appears there, leaving all the ladies slightly excited about this gentleman, they notice that they will no longer have any chance with the 70-year-old girls after all. Shoso would have more of an advantage than them for having become young again, so Inns goes to them to serve him tea. But when she takes the drink, the man who was already nervous to see she drops it on her clothes and Eins tries to clean him and says she will bring him a towel and going back a little to the past. Sho's son tries to invite him to live with him and his granddaughter. But Sho refuses to leave his home and states that he won't even give him a hand in this. His son remembers that both his and his wife's bodies have already reached their limits. Therefore, he just wants to be able to take care of them. But Shuso explains that this is the land of his ancestors, which they have protected for centuries, and that's why he can't just abandon his place in it. K.A. tells Ainz that he will be fine. Regardless of his choice and in says that they can go anywhere as long as she remains by her husband's side and on the day next CD returns to her in-law's house and brings with her the ingredients she didn't ask for while she heads there. His vestment informs that Inage went to a meeting at the community center, and when I noticed her better, I saw her visibly startled by something but I assumed that she was like that because she didn't know where she was in this. She made the excuse that she needed to use the bathroom just to get away from him. I do this. She notices that her father-in-law is very handsome, so she tries to calm down. After all, she can't forget to tell Yoshiaki that. And after the whole family gets together, Mino's father discovers that his daughter was trying to play with her father, and then she states that Choso is much kinder than him, and in addition, she makes it clear that it was all just a joke. However, the atmosphere was so high that she ended up losing control. And if Shik asks Cade what's wrong with her, not having told her this before, she explains that this is a complicated subject, so she thought it would be better to wait to tell her in person what is she saying. But the girl insists and says that there is no problem with that, but CD already remembers that her father is present and uncle in turn explains that he only has eyes for his wife in. But he still receives the concealer to stay smart, and at the end of the family meeting they say goodbye, and I would notice that Osik is visibly tired from work, and strokes his head he remembers his childhood when she would pat his head to congratulate him on his efforts. Jealous and asks her grandmother to pet her head too and promptly says goodbye to her granddaughter. But Yoshiaki rushes the girl saying that they should return home. The next day, a group of elderly people talk about such a sports competition, but they regret it because Tamat always wins the competition. This makes them think about giving up, but suddenly Choso appears they're all pumped up about it. The gentlemen ask him to participate in the multi-sport Gymkhana alongside them. Although Choso tries to refuse, he ends up being dragged to the community center. After that, the day of the jink arrives and one of the elderly people comments to the others that Min NMT might not participate, as the other members are already over 50 years old. Therefore, he guarantees that Kitty's chance of winning is very high, but he is disappointed to see that their opponents will be a bunch of old people and D states that if they run hard, these old men won't even be able to finish a lap, so they must control themselves. 
L, you laugh at the other elderly people's faces and state that they are just there to have fun. After all, victory of his grandchildren is already guaranteed that Sano informs that they prepared a triumphal weapon for that year. In this case, he is talking about the couple left, the apple farm and or see that Senior R on his face once again disdaining the couple left. But soon after doing so that Choso and In appear there and leave everyone with their mouths open. And then you ask if they would be Seitu's grandchildren and Choso informs that it is he himself to Seitu. That being said, they begin G charms and begin with a tug of war between Minami and Kitten. So Chu keeps pulling the rope, but he starts to lose. I see this Inni helps him by cheering him on in this Chu draws strength from beyond and ends up with the boys and after that they go to the race Gymkhana. So King Suk asks them to, to compensate for the defeat of the tug of war. In the race in this Esh states that he was already thinking about doing this from the beginning. And meanwhile, the narrator explains that the brothers and Garrish of the Quitard are doing well. Even though they are so clumsy, the love between them and their, their athleticism compensates for this barrier. And on the other side of the audience, the boy's grandfather cheers them on and explains that they have both been practicing sports together for over 10 years. Therefore, he already knows each other's rhythm very well, while the elderly members of the Saitu team spend it for them. The couple manages to reach the brothers very easily, even though they are tied to each other and Shoso states that he has lived with his wife for more than 70 years. So, he already knows how she would handle it. They reach the arrival made before the boys and after being defeated in all the other contests. The brothers are disappointed and Shay notices that the world has much more incredible people than he imagines and the boy's grandfather is irritated by all the debortage they did to his grandchildren's faces and, in addition, he, he is indignant with Shoso. In addition to having stolen his Inni 70 years ago, Choso also just stole his grandchildren's smiles in this. He tries to cheer up the boys and says that they can compete in next year's Jink and suddenly Inni comes to them to talk and apologize for being so hard on them. Grandfather, Rook deduces that she must be with Choso now, but she explains that he is busy being pampered by the others, so she sits down to eat with them and soon notices that King's grandchildren. Sook look a lot like him when he was young and speaking of rocks, youth and Inni remembers when he declared himself to her and upon hearing this, the grandchildren discover why their grandfather is fighting with Saitu's team in this Inni tells the boys to improve, to try to challenge them next year and a week after Jin Shouta. He goes to his grandfather's Choso Amand house to deliver a thank you gift for that other day in that Mino opens the door and then the boy starts having a tremble when he sees it but in the end he manages to deliver the bag that his grandfather sent. He explains that it is a gift for Choso and when he sees that the boy went to all the trouble to take the gift, Mino thanks him and asks Shouta to come in and inside. He explains that he had no idea that the couple were her grandparents and he starts to get a little shy because he is alone with a girl who is super popular among girls and boys and besides, Mino always seems to be super happy with himself. Shota having difficulty socializing with people, so Shota decides to hide his anxiety by playing on his cell phone. Meanwhile, Cade and In watch the two from afar and Cade assumes that this boy is her boyfriend. In this case, Shozo goes to the two to understand this situation and finds out that Shiete was just there to deliver a gift. And during the conversation, Shite notices that Mino's Vard appears to be a nice guy. Unlike In and Cad, who look at him with a scary look on their faces, as if he were a predator in this conversation continues and Mino describes Shay as a boy who is good at sports and very intelligent but he notices that she is exaggerating a little. In the meantime, they talk to each other about their supposed relationship being able to work out. Choso asks the boy if he likes someone but Zeno interrupts just in time. Shay decide to go home so Mino regrets not being able to talk to him alone for longer. Then his grandfather realizes that he is the only one who knows about her crush on him and the next day. Mino talks to his grandparents about the beginning of their relationship and Jose explains that I received a dating request from In. Shati, he was very happy, but his father wanted to arrange a marriage for him with his best friend's daughter and hearing. This Mino asks his grandfather what he did to arrange the situation and Tioso reports that he simply got into a fight with his father and tells Ini that she went to the girl who was promised to marry Choso and explained to her what was happening and how. This girl was also already liking someone else. They ended up having no problem with that at all. He asked his grandmother to pretend that she was his rival so they could reenact this remarkable moment and although reluctant at first, she decided to do it for her granddaughter and they noticed that she was basically a bully from that time. Because she probably sent the girl running, 
because she looked deep into Mino's eyes telling her not to lay a hand on her lover and the girl ends up hugging. Her saying that she loves her grandfather but she also loves her grandmother and in morals this anime, it's very crazy. It's everything you said for the love of God. It's every joke that's going to be played here. I just want to see where this goes, so I'm going to try to keep posting the episodes, leave a like, subscribe, and also comment below. If you want more episode of this crazy thing, that is this crown and crown anime. So I'll see you in the next video and I went. Our episodes begin today with these two boys walking in the garden. One of them tells the other that farming isn't great at all, with a perception that only old folks do it and there's nothing wonderful about it. However, in this day and age, it's up to the youth to go to the city and enjoy themselves. His friend expresses a desire to go to Tokyo and make lots of money, while the other wants to leave quickly and live alone. They believe that by going to Tokyo, they'll find love and live a beautiful life. Suddenly, they see Annie in the garden and wonder who she is since they've never seen her before. Normally, they would only see the old couple there. When Annie greets them, the boys become very embarrassed, their faces turning red and they quickly leave. They wonder who this beautiful girl is as they've never seen her before, but assume she must be the old couple's daughter or granddaughter. Suddenly, Shuzo arrives in a carriage and Annie joins him, bidding farewell to the boys. Then the scene shifts to the past, where we see the grandfather reading the newspaper, and the grandmother asks if she can throw away some advertisements as she notices a clothing sale. She quickly gets up, telling him she'll prepare dinner. Back in the present, Annie asks Suzo if he went somewhere today while he reads the newspaper. He says he just went for a walk. Annie notices a strange box next to him, opens it and finds a beautiful white dress inside. She's overjoyed, thanks him and says it's very beautiful, both of them getting emotional and teary-eyed. Then we see Shuzo and Annie watching a movie on TV and Shuzo says he tried watching it because Mino recommended it. He comments that young people these days watch extremely intense things and honestly, he can't understand why it's good. But even if they don't agree on everything, they can still fully understand each other. He tells Ani there's no point in doing such things as they just for show. The scene shifts to Mino opening the door to the old woman and asking if she's Yosagi's daughter because she's grown so much and become very beautiful. She asks if her grandmother is at home as she brought some plants and vegetables. Mino is very hesitant and doesn't know what to do because she couldn't understand anything due to the old woman's strong accent. Then Annie appears and tells Mino that the old lady's name is Kacha and she works at the fish store. Mino tells her that Kacha's accent is very strong and she couldn't understand anything she said. Kacha asks Annie how it happened to her and Annie says she became a little younger. Kacha then pinches Mino's cheeks, plays with them and asks if she wants to become her grandson's bride, which greatly upsets Mino. The grandmother, Ani, tells her that she won't allow Mino to become anyone's bride so early. There's still plenty of time ahead of her. Later that evening, we see the girl playing on her phone, named Shiori. While the grandmother talks about Shiori spending the night with them, seemingly discussing it with her guardian, Takahiro, she reassures him not to worry, as everything will be fine, and compliments him on his very beautiful daughter. Then we see Shayori talking to herself about how she ended up there because she had a fight with her father. When she ran to her grandmother's house, she was amazed because she couldn't believe her grandmother had become young. Then Annie comes in and tells her how delighted she is that Shiori will stay with them tonight, asking if there's anything specific she'd like to eat. Shiori says there's nothing particular and she's fine as is. As Shiori remembers her father talking to her about her career plans, Asking what she plans to do with her academic achievements if she intends to enter the medical field, she gets very angry and tells him she's not as smart as him, her father. We return to reality where Shiori is lost in her dreams. Having escaped from her studies, her father who raised her well, and also from thinking about her career path and all her friends, leaving her lonely. She says she's so stupid because she worked so hard all this time. Then she cries a lot while Annie puts her hand on her shoulder and starts talking to her, saying that those who have nothing don't cry like this. Her tears are proof enough that she hasn't given up. She's still fighting. Then the grandmother recalls what happened in the past before taking a bite of an apple and asks Shiori what she wants to become in the future. Shiori responds that she'll become a doctor and cure her grandmother's illness. She tells her it doesn't matter what other adults say around her. She's her beloved granddaughter and she loves her very much. There's no reason her grandmother wouldn't spoil her grandchildren. At that time, she already cries a lot and her grandmother prepares dinner for her. Then the scene shifts to the past 
and the grandmother recalls what happened previously when she and her husband, Shuzo, had a conversation. She apologizes to him, saying they can't go on their vacation because she fell ill again. Shuzo reassures her, saying her health is more important now. With a broad smile, she tells him, Okay, Shuzo, take Yoshaki and go for a walk on the beach. He responds, saying he can go, but it would be better and more beautiful if she goes with him. She jokingly asks him if he wants to see her in a swimsuit to that extent, and he enthusiastically agrees, saying, Yes, of course, I want to show you off to all the other men. She then tells him, No, my friend, in that case you'll be a cuckold who doesn't care about his wife if you want to show off me. You should show off my morals, not my body in front of people. We return to reality where the grandmother Annie remembers the previous events and thinks about what she will wear when she goes to the beach. She wants something that covers her chest and body so that others don't look at her. Then Shayori speaks to her and says, Grandma, do what pleases you and wear the appropriate clothes. You're a beautiful woman and still beautiful. The grandmother responds, but I'm still old on the inside. The other tells her that it doesn't matter to her right now. Then Shiori tells her, don't do that. Do you want to make the man who loves you lose his love in that way? At that moment, Annie interrupts their conversation and says she'll think about it while preparing dinner, but it seems like she's avoiding Shiori. Afterward, the house phone rings and the cat meows as the grandmother answers the phone. She hears a voice saying, hello, mom. It's me, she asks. What do you mean? Is this Yoshaki? He confirms that it's him and explains that he's currently suffering from a cold and sinusitis and his throat is in a very bad condition. His mother understands that something is not right, so she records the call. Yoshaki talks about feeling that his voice is getting younger, thinking it will become more mature. His mother replies that his voice has always been like this. When she goes to work in the garden, her voice becomes deeper. However, Yoshaki abruptly changes the subject and tells her that he needs some money, specifically 200 zero gold pieces. This worries his mother even more, and she tells him that he's put himself in a mess. She informs him that she'll note this down, which he thanks her for and appreciates what she does for him. After that, she talks to him on the phone and tells him that she's not his mother, which angers the man. And we later discover that this man is one of the scamming fraudsters. Then Annie sits next to her husband, Shuzo, where they listen to the news bulletin about a man arrested by the police. Shuzo asks his wife to be cautious so that nothing happens to her. The grandmother, Annie, says that it's up to each person to protect themselves. She then tells him that most calls come around 6 in the evening, which is very indicative of suspicion. Annie then takes off her glasses, as she no longer needs them. Her granddaughter remarks that perhaps she caught the eye of some young men as well. Annie mentions that they can't even read the daily six equalities on the wall calendar, shocking her granddaughter as she didn't expect all of this from her. She then asks her grandmother to read the newspaper from her position, and Annie indeed starts reading the newspaper. Meanwhile, Shuzo enters and asks them what they are doing. The granddaughter answers and tells him what happened. After that, Mino asks her grandmother to read the words indicating her, but Mino couldn't do that because the headlines are written in bold font so she can easily see them. Mino talks to her grandmother and asks if they ever held hands and went out before. The grandmother says no, they never did anything like that before. It would be like public display and telling everyone that they are dating. Then the grandfather adds that once the couple becomes old and wise, holding hands becomes a necessary task to help with walking. The granddaughter responds saying they don't even have a bit of romance. Later we see Annie and Shuzo on the way and Annie comments to Shuzo that it's nice to walk to the neighborhood stores. He replies saying that they gave us a lot of extra stuff like Napa cabbage. She comments on how cold the weather is today, surprising Shuzo, who asks why she's not wearing gloves on her hands. She thinks to herself that he noticed and she's trying to gauge her husband's feelings about such things, but it seems like nothing specific is happening. Shuzo considers holding her hand, but he feels it would be like accepting what Mino said earlier, somehow making him feel as if he's lost at something. Then she asks him if he's not feeling cold, to which he replies no. She thinks to herself not to say she's okay, but walking together like this isn't bad either. He tells her they bought a lot of chicken today and were given Napa cabbage too, so they should hurry home and warm themselves up. They then go to the doctor together, and the doctor and nurse are astonished. The nurse says she can't believe her eyes, and the doctor adds that he also can't believe it, but they are definitely his parents as they were in their youth. The doctor talks to them and asks if their condition is good now. Shuzo says yes, and he feels extremely fit. The doctor says they will examine everything possible and discuss matters later, 
Then he examines them and asks Annie to breathe more steadily, noting that her pulse used to be fast but is slow now. He asks if they became young again, and then he says he will provide detailed results later and leaves. Later, the doctor reveals that they found cancer in Annie's liver, especially since she recently recovered from stomach and intestinal inflammation. The first thing they'll do is a CT scan and blood tests, and based on the results, they'll start anti-cancer treatment when the time is right. The doctor, who happens to be their son, speaks emotionally about how the reason he became a doctor was to save his mother. Despite feeling powerless at times, he finds solace in knowing he did everything he could for her. Seth isn't he? He reminisces about happy days planting trees together, harvesting fruits, and their young son playing with them. They were all crying deeply moved by the memories of happiness and family togetherness. After aging, a cyclone hits their garden, causing it to collapse completely with fruits and trees falling to the ground. The grandfather and grandmother try to help each other fix the trees to prevent them from dying. They notice an apple on one of the trees they tended to, and they pick it, amazed by its golden color. The grandmother explains that this apple gives her a strange feeling as if it wants them to eat it. They start eating the apple and find it delicious and juicy, which is rare for this time of year. On the other hand, the tree they tended to breaks and falls to the ground, completely collapsing. We then see the grandmother also falling to the ground in a strange place. Then she stands up again, surprised by her surroundings. Suddenly, she sees an hourglass floating in the air, almost about to fall on her, and if it did, she would have died. At that moment, she wakes up from her dream and tells her husband about the strange dream of the giant hourglass. Her husband reveals that he had the same dream. He tells her that today marks their 58th wedding anniversary, which delights the wife. She expresses how time flies by wonderfully because she's with him. He asks if there's anything she wants to eat, and she mentions red bean rice secretly. When she opens the fridge, she's surprised to find a piece of cake, which she takes to her husband, thinking he didn't prepare anything. However, he surprises her by revealing that he secretly prepared a meal for her too. They hide their love for each other and start eating the cake, making the grandmother's sugar level rise. But the grandfather is extremely happy. The episode ends on this happy note, inviting viewers to subscribe to the channel for more upcoming episodes. The episode begins with Shuzo and Annie preparing lunch. Shuzo mentions that he started working on the farm right after elementary school and has no memories of studying. Annie tells him she remembers attending a girl's school in Tokyo, but it felt more like a dream with unlimited white rice and water at the turn of a tap. However, the war took everything away, so they returned to the countryside, which was like punishment due to the mud. Yet, meeting him made her realize some mud is bearable. Unlike the lack of amenities in Tokyo, Shuzo asks about these things, but Annie keeps it a secret, feeling no need to share. Shuzo pleads for her to confide, but she refuses. Later, Shuzo and Annie sit with their granddaughter, who shows them a device for preventing dementia. Shuzo, intrigued, thinks it's a children's toy with flashing lights and a small screen. But it's actually a video game with Minko cards, Bigoma scrolls, and Chase. When he watches TV, he discovers it's the same game with wandering bodies. And Shiori explains the consequences of breaking into someone's home or harming main characters. She knew her grandparents couldn't handle video games, so watching them seamlessly adapt to it surprises her. They try to hit the characters in the head to minimize suffering and play for a long time. But it becomes too violent, leaving nothing else to do in the game. At this time, their granddaughter Mino enters the house and finds Shiori sitting alone. She rushes to hug her because they haven't seen each other for a long time. However, Shiori coldly asks her to stop clinging to her. Mino tells her it's been a while since she last saw her and notes their relationship has cooled. They attend the same school, but in different buildings, making it hard for them to meet. Mino tells Shiori she knows she loves her grandparents a lot since she lives with them. Shiori admits she doesn't love them but feels obligated to act like she does. Shuzo overhears this conversation and realizes his granddaughter hates him, which deeply upsets him. Mino asks Shiori to apologize to their grandfather and retract her words, but she refuses. Eventually, Mino approaches her grandfather and apologizes as she truly loves him and her grandmother. That night, as Shuzo sleeps, he dreams of becoming an old man again, a recurring dream since their youth returned. He recalls his wife having the same dream. Unsure of its significance, they enjoy their rejuvenated youth but still have many things left undone. They plan for a second honeymoon since Annie isn't an old woman anymore. In the middle of the night, Shuzo wakes up and tells Annie he's become old again, feeling no pain currently but fearing she loved him more when he was young. 
Annie reassures him that she loves the man named Saito Suzo, regardless of his age, as he hasn't changed at all in her eyes. Suzo reflects that he used to think being old was bad, but it's actually disrespectful to the life he's lived with Annie, where age was just a convenient excuse to let go of certain things. It seems like they're deeply immersed in reclaiming their youth. Even though my body remains as it is, whenever it's time for our trip to Atami, we'll go regardless. I shouldn't abandon the enjoyment of life just because I've aged. Grandma, I fell in love with those eyes, she said. Then they go to the clinic, where the doctor asks what's happening with their bodies. Grandma says that's what they want to know. The doctor explains that their kidneys and liver show signs of aging expected for their age, so they shouldn't stress themselves too much. Then Grandma asks about his condition, and the doctor says he's fine, but his physical functions are slightly better than they were before he became young again. His body will gradually return to its original age, but he's worried about Grandma, as she now has the body of a healthy 20-year-old woman. If her body ages gradually from this point, he wonders how much time she'll have. Grandma tells him she's not afraid of death, but given their situation, her husband will likely precede her. She doesn't want to die alone and wonders if she'll live another 70 years. She doesn't want to die alone. Then the doctor sees the grandfather and grandmother, saying he feels closer to her than usual. The grandfather and grandmother go back to being just themselves. Grandpa tells Grandma he still has a lot of vitality even in his current state. He plays with his son, who tells him not to stress himself too much. Grandpa reassures him, saying he's fine. The son tells Grandpa that if he beats him on their trip to Atomy, he'll book him a room with an outdoor bath. When Grandpa hears this, he's thrilled and ready to play. The son thinks to himself, his grip is much stronger than I thought. He's probably worried about accidentally hurting me, so maybe I should use some force. Finally, Grandpa wins. Later, they're in the market and Grandpa remarks, since I became young again. Many people stare at us. I'm sure we don't look like a married couple. He distances himself from Grandma, who asks why he's keeping his distance. He replies that everyone is staring at them. And while it's fine at home, in places like this, teeming with people, it might be better if they pretend not to be married. An employee approaches them, asking if he can help them find a gift for their granddaughter. Grandpa thinks to himself, maybe I should let him think she's my granddaughter. He tells the employee they're shopping with their granddaughter. Grandma corrects him, saying it's not true. He's her husband. She doesn't blame him for thinking otherwise, but appreciates his understanding. Later, on their way home, Grandma asks why he wanted to lie. She doesn't want to be anything other than his wife. Grandpa apologizes, and they continue. Then Grandpa sees sweets in front of him, saying they used to eat them when they were young. But lately, his wife has stopped eating them in front of him, fearing he might develop diabetes in his old age, so he refrains from eating them. He asks if she wants some, but she declines, saying she's not hungry at the moment, but will eat them later. Grandma adds that her husband feels some effects of returning to youth, but his old illness might come back. He loves sweets, and she loves them too. He watches his health and doesn't eat it, so I can't eat it in front of him. I know I'm exaggerating to consider his feelings, but if he's nearby, I can't eat this mommy devoco. Suddenly he wakes up. The grandfather stands behind her, so the grandmother is shocked by that and looks at him while she's very tense and tells him that I swear to you, I wasn't trying to eat it behind your back. So the grandfather tells the grandmother to stop acting considerate towards him and tells her that you're not doing anything wrong, my dear beautiful. Then he starts taking one of these sweets and tells her that seeing your happy face while you eat this is the best medicine for me and starts feeding her a piece of the candy and she also takes some of it, and they are in the peak of happiness. Then the grandmother tells him about memories from her past and remembers when her father and mother died and losing her home. So she went to live with her mother's relatives and worked for them. Her father was very rich when he was alive since he was acting arrogantly with my mother's family. My relatives avoided me. The first problem was not understanding each other. K, they used the phrase Kai to refer to everything and give me this. I didn't feel like we were speaking the same language, their culture, which allowed them to endure cold and hunger, didn't allow for easy acceptance of strangers, made me speak in a Tokyo accent that seemed unfamiliar to them, and some mocked me for it. I didn't feel comfortable at my mother's family's house, so after finishing work in the fields, I spent my time in the local shrine, and one day while I was there, this young man came to talk to me. So I told him that I had moved here from Tokyo not too long ago, and he knew me by my name, so Sasaki tried to get up for him, this handsome young man said there's no problem and no need to get up for him. Then she asks him who he is, and he tells her I'm Saito. I plant apples nearby, 
Seeing a girl sitting here alone made me wonder a little, and suddenly Sasaki's stomach makes sounds indicating she's hungry. So this young man offers her some food. So she tells him I'm not used to it, and the food here is salty and sweet, and tells him it would be better for you not to do this and refuses to take the food from him. She tells him that he must have heard rumors about her, or is it conceivable that you intend to get rid of me? Saito reassures her with a smile and tells her not to worry at all. Just eat this food. I don't know anything about who you are or where you came from, but whatever the reason for staying hungry, I don't want people to say that our village can't help a girl in need of a place to go. Have a good day, then Saito bids her farewell and leaves. Sakai thinks to herself that if there are people like him here too, in this culture of endurance, kindness can be found. She starts eating some of the food and indeed finds it salty. On another day, she finds the young man Saito communicating with her day by day, telling her that this shrine is on my way home, so I can't help but wonder. Then they point her to the bus station, which is on the mountainside and closer to her house and away from people's eyes. I preferred this place to that one. You're really terrible at understanding things, she says to him. He sits down next to her and Sasaki tells him not to take my words to heart. If you don't understand that, the road is still long ahead, so be more careful, please. Suddenly, Saito is very embarrassed and apologizes to her. Sasaki notices their apparent confusion and tension, realizing that he lacks stability and doesn't seem to have received a good education. To what extent will this man be able to influence my heart? Is he worth watching? Back to the present, they're sitting next to each other, and the grandmother, Sasaki, says he has succeeded in completely influencing me, and we see the grandchildren happily eating delicious sweets. On the other side, we see the grandfather, haunted by the dream of the hourglass once again. Even though he hasn't seen it recently, he says, I've been waiting for this moment. If the heart of the hourglass brought me back to my old age, then if its heart turns again, it will make me young again. I wish for that. Since I have this opportunity, I must verify the matter properly. Then he looks at what comes out of this hourglass, finding sand, and says, I can imagine the surprise on my wife's face. He flips the hourglass and wakes up from his sleep to find himself young again, and starts brushing his teeth while waiting for his wife to be surprised. His wife tells him to make sure to comb her hair, which got tangled during his sleep, and he is shocked by her reaction as it's disappointing to him. Then they sit together watching this hourglass, and the wife says there's something that piques her curiosity. Do you think we won't age or die in its sands? The husband replies, I think that's likely to happen. The hourglass is probably designed to lose sand over time. It will eventually empty of sand completely, and I don't know what will happen when that happens, but I believe it will be the end of this youth miracle, and there's no need to worry. My dear, we won't live forever. Our lives won't be longer than our children's or the rest. Then they hold her hands, and he tells her that she's the only person he won't leave behind, so don't worry. They embrace each other, and the wife thanks him for everything he's done for her, Thus, our episode ends. Stay tuned for future episodes of this anime, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button to receive all the latest updates.